So sometimes you'll be using box cutter and just drawing your shapes. And of course your shapes are no longer on screen, but you'll be like, you know what? I need these shapes to come back. So for that reason, you can press Alt W and you're inside of hops tool if you have hard ops installed and holding control will actually allow the dots to be representative of hops tool shapes that you can hold control and click in order to bring back as you can see here. And then of course, because we're on collection one and collection two, press one to disable them. We could hold control and bring it back again. Um, we could also press shift H and, or um, press two, go to collection two, press shift H to hide everything except this one, go back to collection one, hold shift and enable collection two. And with this shape being isolated, we are able to press Alt W and go back to box cutter and perform a cut on the cutter itself, which can result in a pretty interesting shape for some rather unique workflow. So this is something I just wanted to point out. There is a reason that it is nice to switch back and forth between hops tool and box cutter. Another example would be, let's say we drew a box and we press B to bevel it and we shifted it to live. We could press Alt W, switch over to hops tool and actually use these dots in order to adjust this shape and do additional things like select the bottom face, press Q to use the hard ops Q menu to control click mark in order to just add a bevel. We'll press N to flip that. And if we go back to object mode, we now have two dots that we're able to adjust. And here we are using box cutter in conjunction with hard ops in order to kind of maximize what we're doing in this workflow. However, alternatively, you can just go to box cutter, draw a box, press B to bevel, press Q to do a contour bevel, shift to live, and then Alt W switch over to hops tool where we have a dot for this bevel and we have a dot for this bevel at the bottom. And then of course, to use these dots to their fullest while holding control, you can just right click to bring up a modifier panel where we can get in and actually adjust the segment counts to turn this one into a chamfer and also turn this one into a chamfer as well, if we so desire. So there is a degree of versatility between using both of these tools together. So I did want to do a small segment, just showing a small scenario in which you would use both of them. Another one would be, let's switch over to box cutter. We draw a shape, press X a couple of times to switch over to inset. We press T and this is now our inset, which our inset's actually working out for us quite well. But if we shift to live, we can then press Alt W, switch over to hops tool. And while holding control, there's a solidified dot that we're able to move around in order to continue adjusting the inset. However, inset is one of the more stable, one of the more unstable systems because of its uh, randomness with the types of shapes that it can generate, putting a solidify on a manifold shape, but more on that later. But I just wanted to show a couple of scenarios in which you can use box cutter with hops tool together to basically get the most out of both tools.